Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This is the end of day report for trading on Friday, April the 22nd, 2016. The markets had a very eventful week with earnings that came out, along with, with some government intervention or escalating the currency world wars further. As we learned that China has started its own gold exchange and is making efforts to pull away from the US dollar, we learned that Saudi Arabia also uh, made attempts to pull away from the US dollar, so we had to villain villainize them in the media. We also saw the US government intervene heavily to save the US dollar and in doing so destroy the metals markets as a result in a desperate attempt to prop up the US dollar and the US bond markets that's what we saw that's what happened so as we look at the charts here this is the chart of the Dow futures uh, contract as you can see it is overbought okay we hit uh, the 18,000 mark but failed to close above 18,000 in the futures the cash index managed to close just barely above 18,000 as it closed at 18,003 alright so what we have is a situation where the cash indexes are leading the futures indexes continually here which is supposed to be the other way around so this in a longer term perspective is not a good thing the futures needs to be leading the cash not the cash leading the futures all right so we have what is called an overbought situation leading into trading for next week another devastating blow to the markets came in the form of caterpillars earnings as we know Caterpillar is akin to Dr. Copper. The Copper Futures has a doctorate in economics so we say on the street and Caterpillar is a leading indicator as well as far as global growth uh, outputs and things like that so um, we, we're basically seeing all indicators all signs pointing to a collapse of empire caterpillar down uh, copper not looking so hot either taking a look at Walmart's earning the biggest retail in the world closing hundreds of stores and basically saying we have no prospects of making money going into the rest of the year it's just April and they're already giving guidance for the rest of the year that's not a good thing here's a chart of copper bull market no we're in a continued extended downtrend bear market just riding the downtrend riding the bottom of the Kumo cloud here got up touched the trend line couldn't close above it here couldn't close above it here couldn't close above it here couldn't close above it three times is a charm right so as you can see this market is pretty much overbought now as of here and going nowhere taking a look at uh, let's see here give me just a second all right taking a look now at caterpillar you can see it's into the Kumo cloud extended downtrend try to make a little something happen and that's now coming off $69.96 is the target for trading for next week. If $69.96 is taken out, then it's going to be back down to test those lows of $56.36. So that's what's in play here in Caterpillar. Taking a look now at uh, our next victim. Our next victim here is the largest computer giant in the world, Microsoft. As you can see, 
try to uh, positive pulse wave uh, here this week only to form this bearish engulfing candle to put an end to this run going into next week now unfortunately fifty dollars and thirty one cents is support and if that's taken out then the outside bottom of this Kumo cloud dropping below forty five dollars is in play for Microsoft so that's not looking good all right let's move on to the next victim looking at McDonald's right now you can see McDonald's started to come off too after earnings after topping out at 129.80 and closing at 125.50 unfortunately the 117.66 is now in play that's the uh, the support going into next week if that is taken out then we head toward the trend line of 111.44 which is going to be the initial downside target for McDonald's moving further down the line here here is our next victim Google Google right now same thing bearish engulfing candle putting a stop to the attempt at a positive pulse wave we got a downtrend channel that's trying to form here I think it'll become more pronounced as the six hundred and sixty three dollar and six cents support gets violated going into next week so you're looking at um, a possible hundred dollar move coming in the Goog and that would put it down to test the trend line support which is at six seventy three eighty one and then that should not hold it should spike below that taking out the 66306 getting into the Kumo cloud and dropping to test that 600 so it's about 600 let's make it let's make it uh, I want to say 589 between 589 and 574 31 we'll call it we'll say 574 31 is strong support for um, for Goog and you don't want to see that taken out because if that's taken out then uh, it's, it's in free fall from that point so a lot of big things coming here is this market here is, is topping out alright let's see here let's see our next victim here is going to be Netflix same thing look at that candle all right, eighty-seven dollars and thirty-six cents is in play for next week. If taken out, this uh, market is also going to be in free fall, as it is topped out uh, at the uh, outside of the Kumo cloud failure to close outside of that Kumo cloud. Uh, that resistance just proved to be too strong up there, and I think the hundred dollars is about to be violated going into next week, as we have downward momentum and pressure coming up. Look at that spike in the volume look at that downtrend channel I see Netflix is being toast alright let's take a look at what people would call the rock star for the week Facebook closing at 110.56 however $100.30 is, is strong support you don't want to see that taken out next week uh, this market is going to need to get uh, out above the 114.04 highs in order to be in play if so the initial target is 116.99 uh, and it's going to try to get up to 120 take out the old highs of 117.59 all right and let's see next victim let's take a look at Amazon Amazon weakness closing at 62050 downward momentum starting to pick up a bit has strong support at 50432 uh, I see sideways to slightly lower prices for next week not a lot of action here but again that 50432 was out there as strong support it violated this market free falls too 
all right taking a look now at Apple Apple is coming off uh, 9871 is going to be your strong support uh, short trigger for this uh, stock for next week if 9871 is taken out this market is in free fall as well and let's see always try to save the best for last here let's take a look at this dollar index alright as you can see this market was in trouble it was coming off it was in a downtrend and they were able to stop it by pumping liquidity into the market and managed to get it to close today above back above 95 so at 9509 is where they took it to trying to put a floor underneath of there all right kept the bids coming throughout the entire session to keep it from falling uh, back below that 95 and that's just where it stayed it didn't rally didn't push any further just stayed there um, just incredible uh, intervention on behalf of the the US government uh, in this particular market I want to point out something here the algorithms were quite impressive uh, this week as far as these uh, pulse wave triggers they were on point um, more so than I think I've ever seen them before even in the past coming into the week we had a red alert rally alert for the US dollar index now we picked up the irregularities in this market uh, as of last week so coming into this week uh, that's that is the indicator I got that's what I posted for you uh, in the video that I did on Monday and you can see that on the blog as well you can see the uh, the post wave price trigger sheet that told you that it was going that there was something nefarious going on we picked it up it said it would rally however there was no play per se to get involved until it took out major resistance above that 9521 which we never got up there uh, it got close today but just could not push beyond that so that alert now is off the table we got the uh, we got that rally alert but the way it played out um, was pretty incredible because I had no idea that government intervention would take place to prop up the dollar all I was reading was the irregularities in the put call ratios and what was happening uh, in the market depth at the time so we we saw it but the way it played out I thought was was <laughs> pretty amazing uh, now moving forward into the the, the crude oil um, crude oil too has been just pushing forward as much as it can to that trend line now if you remember what I told you I said the, tr the trend line was gonna be around 4450 alright well guess what the high was 4450 this week in this crude oil so let's give a hand out let's give a big warm hand clap for the pulse wave for calling that uh, that the market was gonna get there or that was the initial target and that was going to be it and that's exactly what happened the market quickly got there and retreated touched the 44 uh, 50 and couldn't do it yes and it hit it yesterday then today it tested it again and went to 44 45 before pulling back and finally settling today at 43 72 and a half so a big round of applause for uh, the pulse wave for picking that up and letting us know what the target was going to be even when we were way back here and that's what the market did it's up here now t testing touching that trend line resistance the question is going to be now we are overbought is it going to try to make another run and push out 
of this trend line and bump its head on the bottom of the Kumo cloud. This air pocket between the trend line and the bottom of the Kumo cloud is very strong resistance. The bottom of the Kumo cloud is powerful resistance. Does is there enough buying interest that that this market can sucker in to get longs to push this up? If so, then it's going to try its best next week to close above fifty dollars. Now, I will say this: in all fairness, this is the Kumo cloud of death. But if this market can close above fifty next week, then that should trigger the robots and the algorithms out there to start buying this market to push it to 60 because a lot of analysts have been calling for $60 oil for this week for this year so $50 is going to be that magic line drawn in the sand and you're going to see the machines turn on at that point and there should be amazing buying interest if this market closes above $50 especially uh, in the coming week so just a heads up there uh, this this is going to be one to watch but again round of applause the the pulse wave called the dollar rally this week and it also uh, gave you the heads up as where the resistance was going to be uh, in the uh, in the crude oil so uh, amazing performance there all right now we're going to take a look at these uh, these metals they managed to operate in that and manipulate the metals again even though the the reports are out the news is out there the markets been manipulated for some time since 2007 and they're still manipulated now that they've they've reported it and, and admitted it they still they figure they can just do it anytime they want now and that's what they did they smacked it down look at this without even disturbing the trend or doing damage to the chart they managed to smack it down and have it close right there uh, near the lows of the session. So this market went up to 1273 and managed to get down to 1229.30 today from 1273 yesterday. That's that's a, that's amazing movement. $40 move in 24 hours to the downside in the gold. But yet we're just like hanging it's just hovering here it's almost like they wanted to make it seem inconspicuous like it's just something normal but look at this this is just levitating here we didn't take out the prior week's low we didn't close below the prior week's low even though we closed at the bottom of the range but it's just hovering here amazing how they were able to do that so they were able to achieve what they needed to achieve with rescuing the dollar while doing damage to the metals markets but they able to, they were able to stave off any further upward momentum in this market so now you're suspended in midair you have the momentum sucked completely out of the market look at this neutral reading on the momentum look at that it's just it's just fully extended out here it's not straight up or down it's just flattened out and it's look at that neutral neutral as can be as if all the buying interest disappeared out of the market just gone and even selling interest too if, th if this market was truly being uh, sold it would have it would have collapsed a lot more than that we would have took out uh, we would have took out the support big time uh, we would have closed below 1200 so they managed to close it below the 1250 threshold that was the momentum uh, uh, threshold so they closed below it about 15 bucks below it but just above that 1200 so it's still closing above 1200 it's just consolidated here going nowhere just trading in a range right now that range for all intents and purposes is uh, 1192 on the bottom side and 1289.70 on the top side. So you basically have a hundred dollar trading range now that's been established in gold. A hundred dollar trading range. So it's it's gone nowhere. Momentum sucked out of the market. Very successful in them doing that. All right, let's take a look now at silver. 
the silver market is quite a different picture it's overbought now but it's trying to lock in if this if we get one more like this next week that's an official lock-in and this market is definitely on its way to 18 and then to 20 seems to be a lot of power in the silver so even though gold for some odd reason is being held at bay the silver is becoming trying to become a powerhouse and managed to close above 17 today we closed at 1702 and 1698 half on the big contract so it's right there at the door where this market could do some serious upside damage going into next week is very possible so we'll have to we we'll have to really watch this one to see what develops uh, for next week but we do have strong support at 1491 alright so uh, this this silver um, is gonna definitely be one to watch going into next week um, along with the oil and the uh, the US dollar and so let's take a look at how the dollar is affecting these commodities the grain complex was absolutely on fire before the government intervention and as you can see here the beans were able to get outside of the Kumo cloud and pretty much has the, the same uh, feel to it as the silver except for there's something different this has locked in and embedded on the bullish side and that it closed outside the Kumo cloud as well this market is definitely in play and I think we will have beans in the teens uh, going into this spring as we get further in the spring and into the summer uh, I definitely see beans in the teens uh, so expect soybeans to probably get somewhere about maybe I'm gonna say fifteen dollars a bushel it, the, the, based on the speed and acceleration of this move it could get up to fifteen to twenty dollars a bushel easy so we'll see what's up um, other than that like I said um, check for the the pulse waves I will try to post them Sunday night into early Monday morning and uh, remember that bulls make money bears make money but pigs get slaughtered take what you can give nothing back and it's going to be some exciting times next week because we have more earnings especially in the tech sector next week a lot of tech earnings uh, so going forward I believe that the markets are shaping up for some amazing amazing profit potentials the Fed has tipped its hand in between Fed meetings here we had these emergency meetings the other week and now we're, we're seeing the result of those meetings without it being exposed to the public uh, and also the the media was quiet um, as all this was taking place uh, today and yesterday you didn't see you didn't hear a lot going on about what was happening in these markets um, so if it wasn't for me telling you and alerting you you wouldn't even have known what was going on because it was just totally total media blackout on it so just wanted to alert you to that as the equity markets are showing signs of topping out and rolling over uh, be prepared for some amazing moves next week and I, I, I do believe that the sell in May and go away is gonna play out this year and I think that some enormous downside is coming in the equities and we're gonna really be able to capitalize on the downside in the equities and the explosion in the metals because they're not going to be able to keep it beat down like that so get ready for some amazing upward momentum in metals and I see downward uh, spiraling for the dollar and for the equity US equity market and crude oil is going to be the wild card is it going to be able to push beyond and run the 60 and total totally decouple itself from the US equity market or is it going to roll over with the equity market and the dollar so prepare for the dollar oil and the indexes to really just roll over while the metals and the other commodities like you know the, the beans and corn and wheat to take off like a rocket barring any other intervention of course so anyway everyone have a great weekend and be encouraged